My name is Ted Ray, and I've been asked by the staff at Gilmer Arts to announce this year's award-winning artists. There are prizes awarded in the categories of two-dimensional art, three-dimensional art, and photography. In lieu of a reception, here's a quick look at all of the work in this year's exhibition. Expect a slower, longer, more detailed view in the near future. Unfortunately, due to concerns about COVID, we were unable to have an opening reception. The juror for this year's exhibition is Ted Field, gallery director for the last two years, and this is his last official duty in this role, and he will be missed. Ted took this role very seriously and wrote down some thoughtful commentary about his views of each award-winning piece. And now here are the awards for the Gilmer Arts 2022 Juried Art Exhibit. In the category of photography, two prizes have been awarded. Second place goes to Bob Casper for Lynx, and about which Ted Field has to say, I love it when an artist can find beauty in the everyday. In fact, what most might even consider ugly. How many of us would have walked right past this chain not seeing the artistic potential? The composition is still, as still as rust. The chain rests firmly in the center. Movement is not implied. The power is in the immobility. If you stay still too long, you might rust. But if you look past the subject, there is an explosion of warm autumnal colors. Decay is not monochromatic, and it takes an artist to see that. This is the kind of art that makes me want to get out my camera and try to see things differently. Who would have thought that something so simple could be so inspirational? And in the category of photography, the blue ribbon goes to Scott Davis for landscape, flowing, for which Ted Field writes, Almost all works of art, painting, photographs, or sculptures feature a subject, the most important thing in the piece, a tree, a stream, or a chair. But there are some works of art that defy this characterization. And this is one of those works. To me, this appears to be the image of a marsh with the reflection of the marsh grass in the water. But look closely at the water. It is easily as interesting as the jagged image of the grasses. The background is filled with color and movement. You might even say that it is more alive than the subject. Orange, red, blue, and green are applied with layers of wax to create a beautiful complex base that is interrupted with the black disturbances, almost like static interference. Look at this piece differently, not as grass reflected in a peaceful marsh, but a colorful field pierced with a black entity. You can decide. Is the photograph calm or menacing? In the category of two-dimensional art, third place goes to Barbara Edwards for Autumn Glow. Almost on the heels of the Impressionists was a group of artists called the Expressionists. They were not looking to create an impression of light. They wanted to express how they feel about a subject. And they did this by being daring and bold. If you look closely at an Expressionist painting, you can almost tell how the work was created. Try it with this painting. Look closely. Can you see the pencil sketch peeking out from underneath the paint? This image is not static. It is moving and alive. I love the quick, confident marks made on the surface. They create immediacy and movement. A blur of color as the wind whips through an autumn forest, painted with great gusto. Second place in the two-dimensional category goes to Ellie Hubgood for Seeking Serenity. At its most basic, this is a beautiful watercolor, but this painting goes beyond that. First, let's look at the composition. The horizon is perfectly horizontal, giving the painting stability. The chairs, on the other hand, are asymmetrical. They are not centered, but trail off to one side. To me, it's as if I was walking down the beach and just glanced over at this scene. A captured moment. But here is the good part. There is a story in this scene. Someone left their flip-flops. Where are they? They don't seem to be swimming. Maybe they left to get more sunscreen, or a drink, or to take a leisurely walk down the beach. 
Maybe they belong to the artist who just took them off to create this painting. Maybe if I stand here long enough, I will be in the painting. And the blue ribbon in the two-dimensional category goes to Elizabeth Bain for Road Through the Woods. Most modern art lovers would place Impressionism high on their list of favorites. This artist has a style that would fit right in. Let's examine it as we would one of the masters. Start four or five feet away from the canvas. Notice the light. There's the dappled light coming through the trees, the cooler shade created by the trees, and if you look higher up on the canvas into the background, you can almost detect a lifting mist, a fog just being cleared by the heat of the day. Now for the fun part. Walk closer, get right up to the surface, nose to nose. Look at how that shimmering light was made, dabs of pale blue, chartreuse, and mustard yellow out of nowhere. A wonderful example in the use of color to create light. In the category of three-dimensional art, the third place prize is awarded to Justin Howard for Steel Bread. About Steel Bread, Ted Field writes, it is so difficult to take something hard and make it look soft, alive. This particular sculpture is like a line drawing in three dimensions. The wonderful thing about this sculpture is that the drawing is not on paper, but on the real world. Early on, I was taught to look at the negative space, the area that the sculpture contains, but is not the sculpture itself. As you walk around this head, it changes from side to side and front to back but so does the background. Look through it as well as at it. We are given very little information, but enough that we can fill in the blanks ourselves. The smooth hide on one side of the head and the long mane on the other. The alert ears and focused eyes. And of course, the material adds to this story. A great centerpiece for any room. Julie Brown takes second place in the 3D category with her fine ceramic piece titled Many Directions. I think all of us, when we stand in front of a work of art, try to figure out what the artist is attempting to say. When we ask the artist, they will answer, well, what do you see? In this bowl, I see a beautiful landscape. The ocean laps at the dry sand, and in the background are tall mountains beneath a deep blue evening sky. Is that what the artist meant? Who knows? That is the best thing about art. The art of pottery making is one of the most ancient of all human artistic endeavors. First of all, it is useful. And as we later found out, it can also be beautiful. The shape of this bowl is delicious, as delicious as the image found on its base. Whenever I look at this bowl, I will always imagine lying on a sandy beach while nighttime approaches over the mountains and you can put stuff in it. And in the category of three-dimensional art, first place goes to Ted Ray. Impossible. Highly unlikely. This has got to be rigged. Truthfully, Pam Burns asked me to make these announcements before Ted Field had completed the judging. I'm honored to have received the blue ribbon in this category. And this is what Ted Field had to say about the winning piece, which is titled Burrow. Let's talk about artistic decisions. Michelangelo said that sculpting was easy. You just remove the useless bits. This artist is making the same decisions, but why is he keeping certain bits and removing others? Hands weigh heavily in this particular piece. Big, small, gloved, and a long, long nose. This piece walks the line between pop art and surrealism. Is it meant to be humorous or a weird dream? I challenge all of you to make your own story about this piece. Here's mine. The bottom of the book is stark white, the opposite of the chaotic and colorful top. But there is something important. 333. Three, three. Why did the artist include those numbers? Is it related to 666? If 666 is the mark of the beast, could 333 be the mark of the host? Is this a riotous heaven above a smooth layer of clouds? Okay, probably not, but it made me look and thing. And let's get real, it's pretty cool. I'd like to thank Pam Burns for inviting me to participate in this awards announcement. 
On behalf of Gilmer Arts, I'd like to congratulate all the artists who won prizes, and I'd like to thank all the artists who participated in the juried exhibit this year. On behalf of the artists, I would like to thank Pam Burns and Jesus and Ted Field and Betty and all of the staff and volunteers at Gilmer Arts for all of their hard work and dedication. And lastly, Ted Field, happy trails. It's been a pleasure knowing you. I wish you all the success in the world.